Buck Sexton is a former CIA analyst and co-host of the Buck Sexton and Clay Travis show. Buck, great to see you. So we're left wondering on this Monday morning as we begin a brand new week, after this threat has been looming for quite some time, how much longer Putin will wait if he does intend to invade? The probability right now, Sandra, is that this will turn into conflict, that this will actually go hot, as they say. This will be uh, a military situation that we have not seen in a, in a long time in the region, to be sure. I think one of the big questions that remains is that this could be either a blitzkrieg, meaning the Russians use the various forward deployed positions they have to go in simultaneously all at once to effectively uh, eliminate the Ukrainian standard military's ability to fight back, or are we going to see something more along the lines of what I would call a dynamic incursion, meaning they go in with greater force to, say, the Donbass region, they go into some of the, the separatist areas of the country, uh, and they decide that they're going to build up from there. Remember, there's already been an ongoing conflict of sorts that has died down recently and well, until now in the region in eastern Ukraine, and there was, of course, the situation in the Crimea. So. Is it going to be all at once, or is it going to be an escalation that takes place over a period of weeks, meaning once even the, the guns start firing, it could get worse from there, or would get worse from there? That's what I think is the bigger question. And to me, this is the biggest head fake of all time, Sandra. It, it feels like that's unfortunately very unlikely. Buck, a White House official admitted last week that Russian cyber attacks are a major concern for this administration. Watch. What's your level of concern that there could be an online or cyber attack against, say, the banking system in the U.S. should Russia decide to invade? As a society, we're a very connected and digitized society. And that, as a society, we don't have the level of cyber resilience that we wish to. Have you already seen that probing from Russia? We consistently see probing activity. How much do we have to consider that a possibility uh, especially when it comes to retaliation by Putin, if we were to act more aggressively, whether it be sanctions or militarily? Well, certainly the Russians have a cyber capability that could effectively turn off, I think, the lights uh, in, in Ukraine, and, and the Ukrainian government is going to be completely outmatched. We have our own abilities, of course, but the Russians tend to be more on offense, and we tend to think more in terms of just security and preventing the kinds of electronic warfare that we know the Russians have been developing for a very long time. So there's absolutely a very real possibility that the Russians may, just in order to make things more complicated here or to make things, they're certainly going to do it in Ukraine, they already are, um, but there could be retaliation on that front. That, that all said, I mean, I, I think that depending on what they actually decide to do with what the level of engagement in Ukraine, assuming they go in, I mean, Sandra, there's so much that we don't know right now, yeah. but assuming they go in, they're going to also be looking very closely at U.S. politics and what our response, what the Biden administration's response is going to be, and they'll calibrate, Putin will calibrate accordingly. Buck, meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris says Americans should be prepared for energy costs to soar because of this ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Listen. When America stands for her principles and all of the things that we hold dear, um, it requires sometimes for, for us to put ourselves out there in a way that maybe we will incur some cost. And in this situation, um, that may relate to energy costs, for example. Take a look at the surge in gas prices we have seen so far, up 20 cents from a month ago, up nearly a dollar from a year ago. The national average now $3.50, uh, 53 cents. So you're looking at a huge spike in energy prices already. And just under this presidency buck, we've seen it go up almost a buck, as I just mentioned. This is obviously a big part of the picture. There could be a major energy squeeze in Europe if you see those energy supplies, particularly to Germany, cut off. Absolutely. And this comes at a time when not only are we, of course, focused on a possible military crisis between Russia, a very heavily armed nuclear, uh, nuclear power, and Ukraine, but a, but a series of political crises 
for the Biden administration that they, quite frankly, have no means of, of addressing without angering their base, whether you're talking about the border, the rising crime across the country, inflation, and now gas prices. The thing about energy prices, people know it, they feel it, they're aware of it, and no amount of spin from the West Wing under Biden is going to actually change their minds about how much they're paying. So we probably would see, again, if this breaks out into open conflict in Ukraine, some major effect at the pump, at least in the short term. And that would just add to the sense that what exactly have we gotten from having this new presidency? What's going well? I think the answer is quite honestly nothing. And I think that's what people are increasingly seeing, as evidenced in the polls that show him below 40 percent nationally and, and so that he's just hemorrhaging support day in and day out. Uh, people are going to recognize it, Sandra, and they're going to have a big problem on their hands if we start to see skyrocketing energy prices. Well, there's no doubt when it comes to the polling of the average American voter, inflation is a top concern for both Republicans and Democrats. Energy, a big part of that picture. Meanwhile, Buck, a bombshell report exposing the CDC's apparent lack of transparency. The New York Times says the CDC failed to make a wide variety of COVID data available to the public despite collecting that information for over a year. It reportedly includes hospitalization numbers broken down by age, race, and vaccine status, and data on the effectiveness of boosters among 18 to 49-year-olds. The CDC reportedly concerned that that data could be misinterpreted to make vaccines appear ineffective. Former CDC Director Robert Redfield says the agency needs to come clean. I think the best thing for CDC to do is to tell the American public the truth uh, and let the data there. I'm sure the American public is uh, intelligent enough to understand the explanations. I know there's a concern that they have that the data somehow may be misinterpreted to determine the efficacy of vaccines rather than just tell people uh, the truth. Will they come clean, Buck? Not anytime soon. They certainly want to continue to control the narrative. I think people have seen Sandra, that the CDC has, at least at the top echelon, turned into a highly politicized and should be distrusted federal agency on many issues. I mean, Dr. Fauci started out this whole situation. I know he's at NIAD under NIH, but same basic idea. It's the lab coat tyrants, as they call them. But they decided they were going to tell us that masks actually work or didn't work, rather, initially. Fauci said they didn't work because he was worried we'd run out of them. We don't need federal bureaucracies lying to us for our own good. And that is effectively what was admitted at the very beginning on the issue of masks by Fauci. And we've continued to see it with this notion that the CDC would be worried we would misinterpret data. Who the heck do they think they are? The American people are supposed to be able to turn to the CDC for the data and know, because how else can we hold the politicians that make these decisions uh, responsible? CDC is running scared center because the Biden anti-COVID regime, unfortunately, has largely, not entirely, but largely been a massive failure. And now they're trying to make sure there's a bit of what we would call CYA in the federal bureaucracy going on. All along, American people have said, just be transparent with us. Tell us what you know so we can make the best decisions for ourselves and our family. We'll see. Buck, thank you. Great to see you. Sandra, good to see you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.